Hello and welcome to Heiser Media's coverage of the 21st annual Crush on the Concho presented by Lone Star Disc. Thank you to our presenting sponsors, Cosmic Disc Golf, D-Town Disc Golf, and Reaper Disc Supply. I'm Nathan Johnson and today I am joined by normally the man behind the camera, but today in front of the microphone, Dave Oster. How's it going, Dave? Pretty good, Nate. Glad to be here. We can see the card today. There's some hot weather out in a more open course here at Middle Concho. We had Andrew Fish, Nicholas Roten, Kevin Kiefer on our card, and right now will be AJ Carey. All pretty close. So excited to see the other side of this course. And we will start with hole one. Thanks to D-Town Disc Golf for getting us started. Part three, 388 feet. Pretty much a straight shot with a bit of a finish to the left. A couple of different lines once you get farther out, but basically you're hitting this main gap off of the tee. Yeah, and Fish, he's, he's looking to keep the hot round going as he, coming off a nine under round yesterday, and that looks like a great shot. Hit the gap nicely. A little bit of hyzer finish gets him a bit of a skip up towards the basket. That should be a nice birdie putt. We've got Nicholas Roten second on the card. He is a local out of San Angelo, Texas, so looking to shred his local course. That's a nice tree there, as uh, Kevin said in the background. Doing my job for me again, and uh, he'll have a birdie putt. Here's Kevin. We watched both Fish and Kevin in the first round, so hopefully they can give us some more highlights. Continuing into the second day of the tournament, and that looks like a nice line from Kev. He's going with a bit of a wider line than Fish did. Um, comes up a little bit short, but he'll have a birdie putt. And then running out our lead card here is AJ Carey, new Lone Star Disc member. And uh, that's a nice shot from him as well, looking for a little bit of ground play. And yeah, he gets it. So four, four great drives really here to start off the day, and uh, we'll see if they can capitalize on their birdie putts. Just a bit short there from Kevin. So he was just outside the circle, and it looks like Fish is pretty close to where Kevin was. We'll see if he can make the adjustment, and he does. Really nice birdie from Fish. That's a good confidence boost putt right there from about 36 feet to get his round going. And a flip-flop from yesterday, we saw Kevin with a big putt to start off after Fish just narrowly misses it, and vice versa today as A.J also gets a nice putt to start off his second round. Yeah, true. That's a good point. So it looks like Nick here is going to be the closest to the pin. We'll see if he's able to connect. And he has a nice strong spin putt there. So three birdies on, on hole one. That's a great way to start your day. And, uh, you know, hopefully some of these players can carry the momentum into hole number two. Yeah, this being the main course on the property, some of the local players, especially like Nick, have a little bit more practice on it, so it should certainly be scorable. Hole 2, sponsored by Reaper Disc Supply, is a par 3, 354 feet. Kind of more of a straight shot, backhand turnover, maybe a forehand line. More trees on the right side that some players may decide to go through. More likely try to go the line Fish went, but a little bit more of a turn he needed. Just catches that tree and kicks off to the left side. Yeah, just left it out a little bit wide there, so... Shouldn't be a too difficult of a scramble to get his par, but let's see if Nick can make the correction. Just comes out a little low. It, it's tough. This is a tough angle to hit, right? Uh, I mean, if you're throwing a turnover backhand like these guys are lining up, it's the tricky part is keeping the height all the way through the flight, especially with a low ceiling like this. So definitely a very technical line. Um, AJ, he's going for that more wide hyzer to get a little bit of ground play, but surprisingly doesn't really get any. So I'll leave him quite a ways from the basket. We spoke yesterday about the inconsistent ground play, and it continues here on this side of the course as well. As you can see, the difference between these last two yeah. shots. Yeah, that was probably 100 feet of skip there from Kev, and uh, big difference. She's just going to lay up, take his par. No harm, no foul. Looked like the conditions were pretty scorable as well on, on this Saturday as well. Yes, low wind again, like we said, uh, unseasonal for that, but a little bit warmer, a little bit more out in the open on this side of the course, so the heat was probably the biggest weather condition, but really not too bad. It is still only March in Texas, but probably mid-80s. Oh, that's a brutal spit out there for Kevin. 
And I, I think he's feeling that one as well. Low right, usually those tend to stick, but the Prodigy basket just kind of nudges it out. He'll have to settle for a par. But yeah, like you said, very scorable conditions. Texas usually not this calm, so we should be looking again for the second round in a row at some some hot scores on this chase card. So we'll move over to hole three. Thanks to Cosmic Disc Golf for sponsoring this one. Mando to the left, so likely a forehand trying to hit the ground and get that consistent skip. You can see there's kind of one spot where this time to land. Only 279 feet, so certainly reachable for these pros. Yeah, Fish leaves that one out a little wide. To get all the way to the basket, you really got to push this Mando tree and go with something higher speed because um, you're really looking to rely on the ground play. So something like this is what you're looking for. Highs are the whole way. Kind of a dud skip, but nice little roll there at the end. Keeps him inside the circle, so that's a nice shot. Yeah, usually 279, you know, you're expecting most of these top pros to just throw a slower disc, maybe putter mid-range. But there's the skip you're looking for, right? Big flyer when you go with that overstable driver with the wide rim. Um, you can really rely on that big flare skip to get you all the way right to the basket. Let's see if Kevin can replicate that. that great. And that's like that two foot difference in height, right? You saw AJ's was a nice low pushing line, but with Kevin, he gave it a little bit too much as fish with a great run from circle two. But Kevin's was just a little bit too high. You know, it, it it got to the ground on too much angle and, and for that reason just kind of dug rather than getting that big flare skip. So AJ still coming about 30 feet short. Misses that putt to the left, unfortunately. Let's see. There's a nice putt from Kevin, able to adjust off the last this unfortunate spit out on the last hole. He's able to get his first birdie of the round. Hoping to get things going. Nick, the best driver of the group. Oh, it just came out low. So have a couple of park cleanups here for the rest of the card. Just the one birdie. Hole three, 279, but a very tricky angle to hit. Very technical shot to get that correct ground play. Um, so not, not the easiest birdie as, as we're seeing on our card. That plane certainly a bit more difficult than you would expect from the stats on the paper. And speaking of difficult, double Mando for hole four, thanks to BS Upshot Tournaments and Shop. Only 305 feet, but low ceiling and probably no more than 20 or 25 feet to get between those two trees. And the tunnel just keeps going. The Mando signs are on two of the trees in this tunnel, but you really have to clear all of them to get all the way up to the green. Yeah, and nice job of Kevin. Of bounds on the other side of this guardrail as well. Yes, yeah, good, good thing to bring up is yeah that OB road over there, um, which definitely can come into play if you take a unfortunate kick. But these players aren't thinking about that as a great shot from Fish. He's able to peer it the whole way up there. Um, it's this is one of the few you know technical lines we have on the course. You know, low ceiling shot. You have to hit this gap. There's no real. And if ands or buts about it, right? You know, you see the line, you just have to hit it and, and execute. So really great hole, really tricky hole. Some struggles so far as nobody's really put themselves too close. AJ, this just comes out high. He's going to clip a one of those trunks and, and drops. Luckily, it drops straight down. With the backhand, you could easily kick over there to the, the right from our angle and, and onto the road. As AJ sends his upshot a bit deep. We're gonna have a couple couple tester pots coming up here, I think. Oh, Kevin, just a bit short for the long birdie bid. Fish, he had the best drive of the group, coming up about 27 feet here for birdie. Nicely done, connects. That's definitely a bonus birdie if there ever was one on this course. I'm sure he's happy yeah, with like that. Well, you said, not a lot of technical holes, but this is definitely one of them. They make a uh, good use of the land here. Low ceiling trees, it can kind of get monotonous, but uh, this is a good kind of different type of hole for these players to have a good challenge for them. 
For sure, yeah. And that was a great – not to be over overlooked, that was a great par save there from AJ, 27-footer as well, after hitting an early tree off, off his drive. So good job to save that par and, and keep the card bogey-free. Yep, good all around. And uh, on your card, Fantasy Disc Golf sponsoring this hole, hole five, the first water carry hole. 372 feet, probably about 300, maybe 275 to cross. And these players are probably just going to try to spike it high because the basket is on a bit of a peninsula. If you go straight into the right, the water wraps around. And you could go skipping off of the, uh, the green into the water long as well. Yeah, this is this is one of those holes that's kind of pick your poison, right? Whatever you're most comfortable with, whatever speed disc, whatever angle to get to, you know, this 370 foot distance, you just kind of go with that, that, right? Nothing in the way. These guys are all opting for that big, big backhand spike hyzer, which, you know, is a very consistent option, and they're all putting it putting nice and safe. I mean, 372, probably 340 foot water carry is not the most daunting for these top professionals so i would i would think all these guys would be able to put something inside at least circle two aj i do want to shout on out this one, maybe. the locals from around the course going into this pond almost regularly we lost a quite a few discs on the practice rounds here and they were pulling them out almost every day and getting them back to all the players and us included so thanks to them that's awesome. Yeah. Love, love that local support. It really takes, um, all of these big, big high level tournaments takes a, a boatload of volunteers to really make it run smoothly. So yeah, big shout out to them. Good putt from fish there to save his par. Um, AJ came up a bit short on his birdie bit, but looks like Kevin and Nick both were able to park their drives and should have pretty easy tap in birdies. So, I mean, yeah, 372 wide open hole, even though there is a bit of a scary water carry should be a pretty much a must get birdie for these guys. And, um, they played the hole pretty much as we would have expected pretty cleanly, um, with, you know, a couple tester putts, but no harm, no foul. And moving over to hole six, Slippery Saucers Disc Golf, sponsoring this hole. Another just kind of wide out in the open, but the uh, water does come into play. If you throw that big wide hyzer, you can kind of flex it so you slow it down as it's getting to the basket, or just swing it real wide so you don't have too much trouble from this getting into the water. Yeah, nice shot there from Kev. I mean, this is one where you really want to decide how high you're going to throw it from the beginning right because if you go high you're going to get a lot less ground play D typically the disc will spike more into the ground versus if you go more of a low line like nick is going here you can count usually i mean he didn't get much there but usually you can count on a little more of a skip so it kind of just depends on on what your preference is and then you can kind of aim accordingly fish he's going high typically you'd expect this to spike he gets a little bit of a skip but stays pretty close and uh yeah that's that's well executed yeah, just another example of that uh, unpredictable ground play. Certainly one of the main challenges that these players are playing with. Usually the wind certainly makes these courses harder. But right now their main challenge, like I said, is going to be their inconsistent ground play. Yeah, I mean, and usually that doesn't cost you too many strokes. It's, oh, what a putt there from Nick from probably 50 feet. Spins it right in. That was super clean. But yeah, like you said, usually it doesn't cost you strokes. It's more of just giving you a little longer putt than you'd like, right? Normally that shot that's 10 feet is maybe 25 feet, right? Because you get a big skip or you get no skip. So more of a mental challenge than a actual, you know, skipping out of bounds challenge at a course like this, but still something to, you know, test the mental game nonetheless as Fish, he's, you know, like I said in round one, Fish is good about going through his routine every time, no matter the length of the putt, takes his time, steps up, drills it, that's really well done. And it looks like we're gonna have our first star frame of the day here on six as something something exciting happened in the uh, in the background. Yeah, I believe that was Casey White skipping off the bottom of the cage from hole five steep head, almost getting the ace. All the players were excited to turn around and see that. As we move over to hole seven, par four, 752 feet, a optional water carry to try to get closer to the basket. It is safe all the way around the right side. Players are kind of aiming towards those trees straight in front and trying to hyzer out. Real big arms could get all the way to the basket, potentially um, setting themselves up for a short approach, but pretty much just trying to get across. And right about like that should be 
kind of the ideal shot. Yep, nice shot from Kevin there. This is a classic hole of bite off as much as you want to chew, right? You know, if you want to play it safe, you can lay it up kind of in the direction that Nick is going for off to the right. I mean, you bring those trees a little bit into play, but not too much. And then the water carries a lot shorter. If you want to go big, you certainly can, you know, carry the water a little bit more, hang it out a little wider to the left, kind of as Fish is doing here. I think he was hoping for a little more turn. This might be close. We're not going to be able to see where that landed, dude. Oh, out of bounds. Wow, it landed in the reeds. Yeah, so those reeds were about five to ten feet thick off of the bank and the out of bounds line was starting right close to the edge of the grass so it was we did find it in the reeds after a few minutes of looking and unfortunately he was out of bounds but they did give him the cross so he didn't have to re -tee. that is a very generous line right there yeah this hole there's no drop zone so if you don't cross that would be a, a pretty tough break but yeah you can see it right there fish is many they're giving him the that spot. You can see kind of the way the shoreline goes. He was kind of angling away from where he crossed, so they get there and makes a pretty good second shot to potentially save his par after going out of bounds. Yeah, very generous there. Hopefully it will be a good break for him. But that's kind of the you can see the 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 punishment for getting super aggressive off the tee, right? You mean could be rewarding, gives you a very short upshot or maybe even a long eagle putt, but at the same time, very punishing as AJ kind of saws this forehand off a little bit. He's going to have a, after the best drive of the group, going to have a long tester putt to save his birdie. Wow, but he connects dead center. What a putt. Staring right at the edge of that water. This basket closer than probably either of the last two. And... Ice in his veins makes it right in the middle, like you said. Yeah, really well done. That's that's one of those frustration putts, right, where you're mad at yourself because you kind of shanked your upshot, but you know you should be birdieing this hole and just it's able to put it in, keep the keep the nerves calm and, and just deliver. Good par save from Fish, like we said. Tough break off the off the tee, coming up a bit short, but I mean every player on this group only took three shots, right? It's kind of how you want to play the hole, but. Yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, just one OB stroke. So we move over to hole eight, par three, 325 feet, thrown through a gap of some of the reeds and some smaller trees into a grouping of trees, about 300 feet past the initial gap. Pretty much just a straight shot, a little bit left to right drift, and the fading back is a good line for these players to get, and then kind of just another out, wide out in the open basket if you're not more than, you know, 35 40 feet away yeah yeah pretty good shot there from kevin just just a straight putter or mid-range um a little bit of drift from left to right that's all you're looking for looks like nick is opting for a bit of a wider line hoping for some skip doesn't really get it so that'll leave him closer to circle's edge but not too big of an issue Let's see aj he likes the straighter line Nice shot there, parked. You could have got the putter there today. Fish to round up the card. He's going a little bit higher, a little more direct, probably with some sort of oh, clips. Some of the branches there of the, the trees on the right-hand side leaves him probably 60 short. Not quite enough on it. AJ now from maybe 38 feet. Hmm. Just leaves it a little, little short, a little left, fades out on him. Good commitment there from Nick with that nose up kind of spinny putt. Leaves a little high and Kevin's able to connect there. Nice birdie putt, good drive. Only birdie on the card, surprisingly. This is pretty, pretty open, pretty straightforward hole. I would uh, have expected more than one birdie, but again, when you have so many birdieable holes in a row on a calm day like this, on a course like this, it's really more of a mental battle than anything because you just got to keep yourself in it, keep your, keep the momentum going, keep the rhythm with your putt. Um, 
it's not as easy as it may look on coverage to really and, be consistent. And not to mention that it was windy for a lot of the practice rounds these players had and then kind of died as the tournament started. So they may not have the shots ready and prepared like they normally would in conditions that they practiced. That's a really good point. Yeah. Probably having to switch up a lot of the discs that they were using in practice for the tournament. Yeah. Not, not, not easy. And we move over to last hole for front nine. We have an Island green 264 feet from the T pad. This is marked by flags, but it's also built into the course. So it's a brick circle that surrounds the basket. It's about circle one. If you don't land inside the circle, there is a drop zone heading back towards the water. So pretty scary. He as Kevin almost hits the basket off the tee pad. Yeah, an ace run there. It comes up a little, a little high, but that's still a great shot. Nice and safely inbounds. This is another hole that, you know, for these players shouldn't be too much of an issue. As Nick kind of he saws his all. Oh, out of bounds. Wow, that is a really bad mistake there from Nick. At 264 with pretty much nothing in the way. I know the island makes things a little bit scary as there's another kind of ace run there from, from AJ. These players are, are all looking to birdie this hole. Fish, just a nice smooth throw, something slow. A little left, but also out of bounds. Wow. Yeah, this green was pretty tight. I said circle one. It might even be a few feet inside of that. Definitely the, the challenge was created because it was only a 264-foot hole plus the water behind these players. Like you said in the last hole, definitely just a mental uh, battle to try to get the right throw in this hole. Yeah, exactly. Like all these players, I'm sure, could make this hole inbounds, you know, nine out of ten times with their eyes closed, right? But once it's a tournament, once once you're looking at it, once there's no wind anymore after you practice it with wind, right? Disc choice, how much you want to, how hard you want to throw. Oh my gosh, is Kevin with a miss on his birdie putt? Wow. And yeah, so that that was Fish and uh, Nick from the drop zone, about 40 feet. Both came up short. So surprisingly, after Maybe the shortest hole on the course. We're going to have our card shooting one over par. Not how you would like to round out your front nine. After most of these guys with a very solid first eight holes. And all pretty close. They started close and they're still battling each other up and down a little bit. And this is, I think, making it even closer as we're finishing out the last hole on the front nine. Yeah, so... Close battle, like you said, Dave, and uh, it's going to stay that way. So don't go too far, folks. The back nine is coming right up. Make sure to not miss it. Thank you to our supporting sponsors, especially the Norse Gods, as well as the rest of our Patreon family for supporting this coverage. Like I said, don't go far. The back nine is coming right up.